seeing on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. They call that booked and busy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, I've, I've been busy in my life, but wow. Well, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, of course, I've been around here all my life. I worked 37 years at Temple PD. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, I was the chief there for 11 years. Oh, wow. And retired and came to work here kind of for a friend, a city manager at the time, was a good friend of mine, been friends for 30 years, and was the chief here, and, and, he, and he passed away. And so they asked me to take over for him, because it was kind of a sudden mm -hmm. thing. So I did, and it's been fulfilling, but while busy. Yeah. Uh, so and Troy is a fast-growing town. Yes. So we've been challenged. Oh, are you? Okay, okay. So you know what we're going to be talking about, huh? Mm -hmm. That's why I brought so, her, because she knows yeah. a little bit more. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Sure, today. absolutely. Just tell me your first and last name. It's Gary Smith. And then can you spell that for me? G-A-R-Y-S-M-I-T-H. And then what's your position here? In I'm the city administrator. Okay. So a lot of people, I'm sure you know, have growing concerns about West Main Street and the construction plans there. Right. Just first tell me how long that construction has been going on. The uh, construction company was given notice to proceed on February the 5th, and we think the project's going to take about 13 months total to complete. You know, that's their contract, and of course with construction contracts, as folks probably know, you know, the, the end date moves a little bit based on weather and other conditions that can add days to a contract. Uh, it's been a little bit wetter this year than last, so, you know, they've had some contract days added, but we still think they're on target to finish pretty close to the original set time. Feel free when you're answering questions just to look at her. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then um, what is the purpose of this project? What is the reason why this construction is happening on that street? Well, uh, West Main Street uh, contains three of our four schools in the city, so we're having it rebuilt to uh, last longer. Uh, and it's being widened a little bit uh, to help with the transit, particularly school buses and things of that nature. Uh, to, it's a very congested area uh, during school days in the mornings and the afternoons. And so the intent is to uh, rebuild that road basically from the base up and to make it a little bit wider so there's a little more safety. Okay. Now, I know parents were concerned about school coming up. It's Absolutely. not already very soon. So how is detours, how are detours going to look when it comes to that road still having construction and school beginning? Okay. Uh, we're hoping that the detour will end as soon as they have that small section that's totally closed off paved. Paving, we understand, will start on Monday, the 5th of August. Their contract requires them to be complete with that total closure by the 13th of August, which is the first day of school. So it's our plan that that detour will no longer be required as of the 13th, which is the first day of school. Um, and I do appreciate people's concerns for uh, the current total closure of that area. And what I mean that is uh, since June the 1st or thereabout, um, we closed that section of Main Street completely. Now that was done so that the work can progress very quickly and we can end this project early next year as opposed to next summer. Um, and what has happened is that when that total closure began, the official detour is, and it always has been, the I-35 service roads that go to Big Elm and from Big Elm to Old 81 and back down to Main Street. That's always been the official detour because we're required to use roadways uh, to, for detours. Now, the school district, out of real kindness to the community and a community spirit, I'm very thankful to the superintendent, Neil Jeter, allowed the community to transit through that parking lot. In fact, in the face of some pretty um, unfriendly driving, let's say. Uh, but they allowed that to remain open for two full months uh, to let the community use that as a, as a way through uh, to shorten their transit periods. And of course, we were concerned about public safety transit as well. And so we were very thankful to the school district for allowing the community to use that parking lot. However, as of the 29th, students were returning to campus for both athletic preparation as well as band preparation and other pre-semester activities. And out of concern for student safety, they asked us to close the road. So we did that, and we agree with them fully that the student safety comes before the traveling convenience of people to cut through that area. And again, a parking lot was never the official detour, and we're thankful to them for letting us do that. Um, we are looking at a situation where that parking lot and that way through is going to be closed for about two weeks 
as opposed to two and a half months. And that's why we're so thankful to the school district for letting people to go through there, even at times when they saw driving behavior that was alarming. And what's being done to ensure that there are no crashes or the traffic there will be monitored? Well, our police department has been monitoring the area. They've uh, had to make a few stops. So I understand for people who have decided to go around the, the barricades and that sort of thing, which violates state law. Uh, and again, we t continue to monitor that. And again, we're looking at two weeks and that should be back open. Now that doesn't mean the whole job's finished, of course. You know, as that paving continues along, there'll be what's called a traffic switch. So the, the pavement that exists today uh, will be closed to be torn out and new pavement will be getting poured again starting Monday and then the traffic will switch to the new pavement while they begin work on the south side of the road on the old pavement and again looking at another six months of work to be done. Are there any concerns that um, they're going to be delayed when they put the pavement down before school? At our last meeting, which was about two and a half weeks ago, we have monthly meetings with the contractor and the engineering services that, that uh, the city has contracted with. Um, they did not express concerns about completing the project on time. And in this particular area where we have that cl full closure, again, their contract requires them to be open by the 13th of August. They did not indicate any problems meeting that requirement. And I can't guarantee it, but they said they could even be a slightly ahead of that schedule, but they can't promise it at this point. And again, when you talk about construction projects, there are a lot of scheduling issues that go on because they have to, you know, call ahead for that much concrete and asphalt and those sorts of things to come in on time and, and continue the work until it's finished. Um, this is kind of a follow-up with Goats Road mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. Um, there was some mention about you guys filing a grant um, yeah. for to help fund any road construction. Right. Uh, how is the progress of that going? Well, not as quickly as we would like. Uh, Goats Road uh, is, is stressed without a doubt. Uh, we work through the Colleen Temple Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is part of the CITCOG. Um, and applied for funding through that program. Now it is in their funding programs for their 2050 uh, transportation plan, uh, but Goats Road's pretty far out. It's around 2034. So, so we're on on the one hand thankful that it's being considered and it's in that process, but wish it had been a little higher priority project, which would have been funded a little earlier in that multi-year plan. You know that said, we have worked on Goats Road. We have uh, replaced a culvert that failed during a heavy rainstorm uh, not that long ago. We've, uh, in fact, just yesterday uh, completed the asphalt topping for that section of road. Uh, and all of that work done over, you know, several months of time, but that was completed yesterday. Uh, I drove out there myself and looked at it. It looked pretty good. Uh, what that means is the challenges for the city moving forward, given that that doesn't have immediate funding through the KTMPO process. And our estimation is that it's over three million dollars that's required to repair all of that area that we, we believe needs to be not just repaired but rebuilt fully, widened with uh, sidewalks installed. Uh, once that's done, it'll be a much nicer area. But until then, what we have to do is determine what funding we have available each budget cycle and continue to work on that road to make it more passable and safer for everybody that's using it. So was is the grant still being considered then? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then as far as like the funding for this construction, is it from the same pool? Same thing. Yep. And, and so the way that some of that works is, again, the city has a certain share of the cost in this thing. It's called a match. But the, the funding basically cycles through the Texas Department of Transportation. Uh, so they have authority over, you know, the, the entire project basically. However, the city has an engineer that we have to pay. We have to pay our, our match for the grants, et cetera. But, uh, you know, it works through that, that state system of uh, funding and inspection and, you know, uh, letting the work. So um, all of that said, it's the same, it's the exact same process. It's the same funding source. That was a KTMPO project as well. Uh, and it just, it finally made it through those processes where we could execute. And how much is this project on West Main costing? It's about $4 million. Mm -hmm. And what do you say to the residents who, you know, are upset about 
the road being closed and just telling them patience. What, yeah. what do you say? Well, <laughs> I, <laughs> look, I, and it's like I started to say, I appreciate their concerns and I appreciate that they feel inconvenienced, et cetera. And if there was anything I wish they could understand is, while I recognize their inconvenience and, and appreciate their fair concerns, I hope they don't misunderstand that this could have been a two and a half month inconvenience, not a two week inconvenience. And but for the graciousness of our school district, it would have been two and a half months. So I, I hope that they appreciate that. You know, I also know that uh, just this afternoon there was a, a call of a potential fire at the elementary school. You know, our, our police department, fire department responded very quickly to that, that this interruption did not slow down public safety. They made it through that construction and did what they had to do. And there was no fire, thankfully, and, and certainly and no students on campus either, but you had staff on campus. And so, uh, but again, to the, to the people who are inconvenienced, the people who are concerned, get it. Uh, we don't want them inconvenienced any longer than is at all possible or necessary. And we will open that road as soon as we physically can. Just out of curiosity, we see a bunch of houses being built mm -hmm. around here. Yeah. Do you believe that uh, Troy was ready for this type of infrastructure demand um, with all the different you know, people coming in and living right. around here? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I think, again, the way things work for cities, uh, tax revenue has to follow growth. It can't come before growth. So you can't, you know, cities fund themselves through taxes, whether they be, you know, property taxes or sales taxes, you know, it's a primary driver of our budget as well. And I think one of the challenges Troy has had with uh, some fairly heavy growth is, again, the, the, the funds that we need to build roads, up, update roads, et cetera, is behind the growth itself, which puts the stress on those roads. And that creates some, uh, shall we say, friction, you know, uh, our citizens, when they call City Hall to, to register their concerns, they're primarily about streets. Uh, you know, they're not complaining about police service, slow police response, they're not complaining about fire response, those sorts of things. They are very concerned about the roadways. And of course, roadways, as just as we mentioned, you know, this, this section of Main Street is extremely expensive and I, you know, it's uh, amazingly expensive. Uh, so we are, in fact, uh, dealing at the city council level, trying to make some budget determinations of how we want to proceed. Um, there's a, a good and bad side to what I'm about to say, which is Troy has some of the lowest property taxes in Bell County. But what goes with that is less money to spend on those things that our citizens want and need. So we're wrestling with those issues right now as to how can we improve the city's financial position without being overburdening tax-wise. You know, it is a fine line to walk and, you know, everybody in the room is concerned about what we can do versus, you know, how much can our citizens afford to, to help out. So, again, we're trying to work through those issues and, uh, again, dealing with those, those tax revenue things and no one wants to pay more taxes. We get that too. And so we're just Again, trying to work through that until we can eventually grow the tax base so that it is we're more self-sustaining without having to ask our citizens to do more and more. And about how far in distance is this stretch of road on Main Street that's being uh, worked on? It goes from approximately Lee Mays Boulevard, and if you're familiar with that, that's the entrance to the Turtle Creek subdivision, the bank is out there, uh, to I-35. It's not a long stretch. And again, the original plan was to go all the way to our west city limits, which is another half mile past that. But uh, financial issues uh, arose. Uh, the economy made it more difficult. Uh, so we had to uh, redesign the scope of that project. We had to limit the scope and stop it at Lee Mays Boulevard instead of going all the way to the city limit, which was our original design and, and desire. Uh, but just financially that couldn't be accomplished. So again, we had to change the scope, uh, reduce the length of the project, uh, make some other adjustments to it, and then move forward from there. About how many miles is that? About a half mile. Half mile, okay, mm -hmm. gotcha. And I know you mentioned also emergency vehicles. Will they be right. able to get through there in case of any sort of emergency? They That's did something. today. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. 
Uh, I mean, the, the work has progressed where an emergency vehicle can transit it and not damage the work that's been done and get to do what needs to be done. And, you know, and there are people who live along this construction area, and they have a right and need to get in and out of their property. So we're working through that. And again, in two weeks, uh, you know, hopefully the dust settles and, and folks can kind of get back to normal. You know, again, you're here because of a very recent thing that on the 29th, we closed the parking lot to the high school on the 29th. So here we are on the 31st, two days later, right? Uh, talking about uh, this uh, inconvenience. And it is, you know, gosh, I mean, that's, it's a pretty long detour, but legally we can't do it any other way and there aren't other cross streets we can use because we don't have streets up there that cut across from the service road to Old 81 or we would have done that and shortened that detour quite a bit. And again, solely for the purpose of protecting students on campus. Is, is the reason that parking lot was closed, solely for that. And there are students there, you can go yourself and look, you know. You know, I was there earlier and saw some kids walking around. They, you know, have breaks and they go to the dollar store and things like that. And, uh, but, but that's the only reason we did that. And again, I'm very thankful to the school district for tolerating uh, inconvenience to them and their staff during the summer while people drove through that parking lot. And there were times I would sit there and watch myself and, and watch driving conduct that frankly was somewhat alarming. And um, and so with kids back on campus, I think uh, their responsibilities first and foremost are the protection and safety of their students. And they requested us to take action and we agreed with them and did so. so. And about how um, far out is the detour? It's about two miles each way. Uh, and we, our public safety people have driven it, timed it to be sure that if for some reason they could not transit through the construction, how much longer it would take. Um, and so it's about two miles each way. And, and of course, portions of those roads, you know, the interstate service roads up that far north are 55 miles an hour. Um, Old 81 is 45 miles an hour. So it's, they're not slow, slow pieces of roadway. Um, there are some limitations to Old 81. In particular, there's a one lane bridge. Uh, Old 81 is a county road, it's not a city road. So uh, again, we appreciate the county's infrastructure as well and understand that there, there are limitations. It's kind of an old country road is what it is. So, um, But yeah, it's a fairly lengthy detour. In fact, I tried to print one out for you guys. If you want it, it's yes. just totally up to you. And again, that's the official detour. It had to be approved through TxDOT uh, and TxDOT regulations, again, don't allow us to use officially a parking lot. So. Again, we're so thankful to the school district for, you know, helping out, you know. And of course, one of the concerns we had over there, again, we wanted to have this closure done so they could speedily do that one section so it wouldn't interfere with school. It also inc improved the speed of the whole project because uh, right there is a huge creek and drainage area. There are all kinds of infrastructure under the road that people can't see. Um, so being able to close that for that period of time shortened the overall project length. Um, and so it, it just, it's just one of those things that happens. But again, it could have been a two and a half month thing instead of two weeks. And so, you know, and, I, and I'm sure people don't fully understand or recognize that. I get that. You know, it's, it's so hard to communicate all of these things. Um, but, you know, their concerns are heard. They're appreciated. You know, I was telling you, people express their concerns about other streets. They're fair gripes when we get them. They're fair. We take it. We get it. We want to fix it too because... It's what we're here for, and, and we will do the best we can with the resources we have. And you said that this project is expected to be done by early next year? Yes. Do you have a projected month? I want to say it was March. March, okay. March. Um, and then once this two-week project is done, what's the next phase? The next phase is, again, the, the this next two weeks, they're going to work on that entire section that's totally closed and that is from basically the I-35 service road to what's called Trojan Road. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's about eh, about a two block length. It's totally closed right now. Their plan is to fully pave that, have it ready to be reopened for traffic to travel on it. They're also going to pave a section of the northern half of Main Street so that they can move traffic to that part so they can close the southern half and tear it out to begin the rebuild on that. Uh, so that's the next part of the project. And again, you know, as you drive down through there, you'll see 
uh, there's activity all the time. And I think that's one of the things I heard most recently is, well, golly, they're not even working on it. Well, they are. Right, right. <laughs> they, they are, but there are portions. One you can't see. The other is they're, laying, they're, pr they're putting in curb today, as a matter of fact, curbing. Uh, so you've got several guys out there working the concrete on that and um, forming it and getting it ready for, you know, that next step, which is the, the pavement to go in. Um, and we sure think it will be an improved roadway by, by every measure, you know, as soon as we're done. And we've got some plans that will help traffic move as well once we get everything completed and restriped. So we're, we're looking forward to being done with it. Um, and if people uh, want to keep up to date in terms of information regarding this, um, just do they, should they just go to your Facebook page? They can go to Facebook. We also uh, have information posted on our website as well. So as things change, uh, you know, for example, when we know for sure when this road's going to reopen fully, we'll post that to our website and to our Facebook. So everyone who has access to those things can get that information so they can see what's new and we again we try to post that and keep it on our front page for weeks or for as long as we think it's it's relevant uh, and as those situations change and can change during construction projects then we'll post that to the best of our ability and if we think it's a significant uh, issue then we'll even do media releases on it as well for both you know the visual and print medias as well so I think I have another question. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. I